News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adayitano Program. Harley Davidson of Guam. Visit our new showroom now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E Fueling Excellence. McDonald's of Guam. I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, Tropical Storm Manny itches closer to our region. Could the storm threaten our Thanksgiving celebration? Plus, a rundown Jigo campus plans in motion to get the school repaired. Will construction at the home of the Sharks finally make headway? And the change administration. Governor-elect Lulian Guerrero is in Colorado meeting with newly elected governors from across the country. More details released on her transition team. Hoffman, and good evening. And welcome back, Crystal Paco. <laughs> Thank you. Good to be back. Happy Thanksgiving Eve, everyone. Well, the weather formation that's been moving at a brisk pace the last couple of days now has a name and now has a schedule. It looks like to make a, its rather unique uh, approach for island residents on Thanksgiving. Jason Salas has more on what Mother Nature has in store for us over the holiday and how concerned you should be. What's now been dubbed Tropical Storm Man Yi, named after a reservoir in Hong Kong, is approaching Guam, expected to make its presence most known right around the time most of us will be preparing our festive holiday meals. The storm has intensified considerably and is moving at a very rapid pace to the northeast as it nears our island. Projections have the system passing between Guam and Yap sometime Thursday afternoon. Chip Guard, head meteorologist at the National Weather Service, says Guamanians will begin to feel gusts beginning Thursday morning and through the evening as Manyi makes its way on its northern track. During this time, the storm is expected to continue to gain force and reach typhoon-level intensity, putting it on par with a Category 3 typhoon once it moves away from Guam. While forecasts do not put our island in immediate danger, we could still experience damaging winds of 39 miles per hour or greater, so caution is advised for you and your family. Guard also indicated that while initial data showed Manyi is a storm featuring more wind than rain, it has developed slightly to the point when Guam should see between 3 to 5 inches of rainfall through Friday. Now, because of its position, island residents on the southeast coast of the island would be wise to secure any tarps or canopies as strong gusts could launch debris or party materials dangerously airborne. Those living in southern villages like Talafofo, Marizo, and Inarahan should consider hosting parties inside the house instead of out. It's expected Guam will be in condition of readiness too later tonight, Wednesday evening. Again, we are under a tropical storm warning. The Joint Information Center announcing late today Guam DOE is preparing to open three emergency shelters at 8 p.m. tonight. That's at Estumbo Elementary, Carbolito Elementary, and Harry S. Truman Elementary. But that's only after Core 2 is declared. GMH is also preparing to take in expectant mothers around 9 p.m. tonight. Additionally, Salvation Army tells KUAM that due to the condition of readiness, the annual Thanksgiving Day luncheon at Chamorro Village has been postponed. The tentative date for the event to feed the island's homeless is Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the Tietzen headquarters. Yeah, and they're looking for volunteers from the village mayor's office and from businesses out there who can help transport those in need to their offices that day. Well, the bid is officially out. Guam DOE confirms they're starting phase one to rebuild Simon Sanchez High School. After years of empty promises, one teacher working at the dilapidated Jigo campus hopes this time construction will finally begin. Carmen Turlahi reports. For nearly a decade, parents, students and teachers at the home of the Sharks have raised their voice demanding officials rebuild the rundown Jigo campus. Andre Bainham, a teacher at Simon Sanchez High, is one of the staff leading students in protest. You know, year after year we, we hear the promises and, um, and we didn't, we don't see any any progress. Progress that was stalled by protests from Cortec. Only recently did they drop the roadblock after breaking a deal with DPW, with nothing standing in the way of the procurement process and full responsibility. On Wednesday, GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez made public the RFP of Phase 1. The department now looking to hire professional land surveying services for Sanchez High and portions of the adjacent FBLG Middle School. There's really no words to describe, um, you know, the feeling right now of things moving forward. Again, like I said, we're cautiously optimistic, um, but we're hopeful and we have faith in the uh, superintendent's abilities and the Board of Education's abilities. As for future protests that might stall the process again, Bainham hopes it doesn't get in the way of constructing the new campus. I can't predict that there won't be, 
but um, you know, again, we have faith and, and we hope that businesses and the companies that are out there bidding for this really take into account um, the um, over 10 years that the students of Samsung have been waiting for for uh, a new campus. You can view the RFP online. All bids for phase one are due by January of 2019. Reporting for Guam's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. The transition to a new administration is well underway. Governor-elect Lulian Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor-elect Josh Tenorio are attending National Orientation Seminars. And the first meeting between representatives of the incoming and outgoing administrations is scheduled, Nick, for Monday. Leon Guerrero on Tuesday announced her transition team leadership. Nessa Vicanto reports. The Leon Guerrero Tenorio transition team is a mix of the political and private sectors. The previously announced chairpersons are GCC President Mary Okada and Professor Laura Souter. The senior transition team advisors were also named former Governor Carl Gutierrez, Senator Tom Anna, former Senators John Uggen and Francis Santos, and former Assistant Interior Secretary Tony Babauta. The subcommittee members are former Senators Tony Sanford, Carlotta Leon Guerrero, and Rory Respicio, Attorney Anita Ariola, John Jr. Calvo, Stephanie Flores, Ruth Gurasami, Attorney Hai Huin, Therese Arroyo Matanani, Derek Kanata, and Dan Tidinko. Mayors Melissa Savaris and Robert Hoffman will chair the inaugural celebration committee. And finally, the incoming administration is also accepting job applications for all levels of government and board and commission positions. Send your letter of interest and resume to 2018 Guam Transition at gmail.com. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Well, family and friends identify the 21-year-old man killed in Sunday's auto bus crash in Jigo as Nathan Figure. Many of them taking to social media, sharing their condolences and messages of how they are going to miss their friend and brother. The tragic crash happened Sunday around 5 p.m. on Route 15 near the old Andy South area. Authorities say a 2013 StarCraft bus collided with the car that Nathan was driving. Medics rushed him to GRMC, but he didn't survive. Friends say Nathan was also a basketball player. A microfriends basketball tourney has been set for December 12th, where they will pay tribute by hanging a banner and giving a moment of silence for Nathan. He's had a change of heart. Drug defendant Vincent Raymond Rios appearing in the District Court of Guam on Wednesday, this time telling the chief judge he's okay with his plea agreement. <clears throat> Back in August, Rios wrote to the court saying he would have never taken the deal had his prior attorney been upfront about the amount of jail time he was facing. His current attorney, Phil Torres, explained that Rios has a comprehension problem and that Rios' primary language is Chamorro. Nonetheless, defense motioned to withdraw their earlier motion to withdraw the guilty plea. The court granted that motion. KUN files show Rios was busted with over 18 pounds of the drug ice in the mail. A status hearing is set for February 2019. And Chris, many thanks being given by the Guam Medical Association and Dr. Tom Shea after their GMA van is found overnight. Dr. Shea posting on his Facebook page, a miracle. Our GMA van was found at 1.30 a.m. on the backside of a two-story commercial building behind the old mega drugs in Dededo. As reported, the van was stolen in broad daylight <coughs> Tuesday afternoon from the Wyndham Gardens on Epal Road in Tumuni. It carries medical supplies for the medical mission program. Now, no word if police have any suspects at this time, but if you have any information, you are always asked to call Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. Coming up, a couple of health alerts as millions prepare to cook up those Thanksgiving meals. It's news you don't want to miss. Stay tuned. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. We value relationships. Because when we commit... I love you guys until you're 80, until you're 90, until you're 100, forever. We are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter. Because when we commit to relationships, we never stop caring. Calvo Select Care, health care that is always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. These are our islands, and this is our Laddystone. This is what we stand for and who we are. For more than 35 years, we delivered connections that matter throughout the Marianas. 
First, via radio link, then by fiber optic cable. We launched the region's first 4G LTE network and continue to make our network faster and stronger. Telecommunications change the way our islands interact with the world, but not the heart behind those interactions. IT&E, explore your world. Check the Connect, Guam's new online source to find local pros and services when you need it the most. Search for services by using keywords or browse through categories and start checking things off your to-do list. Explore listings and find verified professionals on the island for your everyday needs from home to auto, special occasions, and so much more. Create a customer account to rate and save your favorite listings. Get connected today. Visit theconnectguam.com now. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Welcome back. Governor Cavill's Chief of Staff has reminded all cabinet members and senior staffers that they have a job to do and not much time left to do it. This in response to a controversial Facebook post newly appointed Department of Corrections Deputy Director Eric Palacios posted yesterday about Senator Talina Nelson. Palacios publishing a conversation he had with the senator alleging she told him that women in the military have to give sexual favors in order to move up in the ranks. Palacios took it down and apologized to Nelson after the governor's chief of staff, Mark Calvo, reminded him that as public servants, they must hold themselves to a certain level of decorum at all times. You can read more in the story on KUAM.com. Well, it's the most celebrated meal of the year, but before you prep your Thanksgiving feast, a few food safety alerts to keep in mind. From salads to dessert, you'll want to stay away from these food items that could potentially come with a serving of E. coli or salmonella. Lettuce say no to romaine lettuce. This food advisory coming from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who have linked the salad staple to a multi-state outbreak of E. coli. If you have romaine lettuce in your household, throw it out. Return it to the place of purchase. Um, they're advising restaurants, retailers, wholesalers, distributors, don't sell it consumers, you know, don't distribute it and remove it from shelves. Rosanna Robigo is an environmental public health officer administrator here at home. She says it's better to be safe than sorry. The illness has affected at least 32 people from 11 different states. Um, 13 people have actually been hospitalized, including one person who developed hemolytic uremic, uremic syndrome, which is a type of kidney failure. There have been no deaths reported, um, and this is as of November 20, you know, from a report from CDC. The food safety alerts don't stop at the salad course. Food recalls are in effect for some Jenny O brand raw grounds turkey and Duncan Hines cake mixes. We've already reached out to local wholesalers, distributors. Based on that, we have received some information that they've already taken action. So. For us, we are, we're grateful and we're thankful of the support from our local businesses. The products could come with the serving of salmonella. Salmonella is a type of bacteria that can cause salmonellosis, which is a very common bacterial foodborne illness. And some of the most common symptoms are diarrhea, abdominal cramps, fever, and the illness can usually last between four to seven days. But don't let these food safety alerts spoil your appetite. Robigo gives this advice. Always practice, um, you know, food safety tips. Wash your hands. Don't, don't cross-contaminate. Um, purchase a thermometer and make sure you cook your turkey to the right temperature. Um, and make sure you can keep all your foods, you know, keep hot foods hot, cold foods cold. Um, and by doing so, they may have a very safe and enjoyable Thanksgiving dinner. For more information, visit FDA.gov, CDC.gov, or call the Division of Environmental Health at 735-7221. Public Health finds more roaches at Low T Hotel. What started off as a customer complaining of cockroaches in the coffee machine and egg station at the Low T Executive Lounge that forced the lounge to shut down on Tuesday led to a separate inspection and closure of the Low T Charlotte Ballroom 
and Loti's Bakery. Inspectors found an active roach infestation in both facilities. Though the report says the ballroom only had 19 public health demerits or a B rating and the bakery was given a mere three demerits resulting in an A grade, any sign of cockroaches is a health hazard and forces a shutdown. The executive lounge, Charlotte Ballroom and Bakery will remain closed until they pass reinspection. And with regional headlines, here's KSPN 2 News. Hoffa de Guam, here are the headlines for CNMI. To establish a new salary level for members of the legislature, this is House Bill 20-194. And this measure passes the Senate with six votes for yes, one vote for no, and two members absent. Senator Justo Kitigua voted no for this reason. They came up with uh, their own uh, composite price index uh, which is which they came up to forty seven five 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 point uh, point forty seven. However, the commission recommended that the salaries will remain at uh, thirty nine three hundred. If I am going to support the new salary, I will support it strictly on. The U.S. Uh, CPI, which is thirty-two thousand three hundred twelve and nineteen cents, that's why I voted no. Mm -hmm. And prior to voting, the senators heard from the advisory commission chairman Alex Sablon. It was my opinion, along with the main commissioners, was that we wanted to get wages as close to, if not better than, um, obviously eight thousand, but um, more so to make legislators whole again. Uh, with respect to wages that they currently um, are awarded, which is the 39300 When we came back to our second session, um, you know, I'll be very frank with you, the argument was that the BLSI immediately would be the realistic approach to establishing what the wage would be, which at that time, based on current statistics, would be 32312 if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the commissioners wanted to argue the point that if we stuck to that point of utilizing the BLSI, that we would pigeonhole future commissions and basically the BLSI would be the only basis in which to establish wages going forward. And in looking forward, this was a concern, explained Sablon. The concern that I had and many of the commissioners was that it would take 16 years, almost 16 years to establish <coughs> the current wage base of 39.3 if we set the bar at 32,312. Concluding to a new salary level at status quo of $39,000. We're keeping the status quo and that this would be the base salary going forward for any future commission. And so it was the opinion of the commission to take not the, what was the extreme, would be 60,777 or even the ultimate uh, salary basis of which we established under our formula, which was the $45,000, but that uh, keeping the status quo would be the basis for how we um, try to move this salary formula forward and the basis of our establishment for your wages. Senator Kitigua, along with five of the senators in total, will not be receiving a salary next year, as they are retirees. The legislation now heads to the office of Governor Ralph Torres for his decision. For more news, visit SiapanTV.com. For KSPN2 News, I'm Ashley McDowell. Well, the Guam Memorial Hospital Volunteers Association unveiled the room improvements at the medical surgical unit. The rooms were outfitted with window treatments and tinting, padded benches, wall clocks, a fresh coat of paint, and flat screen TVs. The project was funded by a $50,000 donation by the Filipino community of Guam. The 33 TVs donated by GTA Teleguam. The GMHVA says the refurbished rooms will make it much more conducive for the healing and caring of patients. The Kashiwa Young Entrepreneurs Group has held their 40th anniversary reception at the Height Regency last night. The Youth Economic Organization has been conducting overseas business and tabbed Guam as their destination for their overseas exchange project as part of their four-decade anniversary. There is some history between our communities as Guam and Kashiwa celebrated the 27th anniversary of a sister city agreement back in 1991. 
Well, Chris, this afternoon and just in time for Thanksgiving, quality distributors donated over 32 grand worth of food to the Salvation Army Guam Corps Food Bank. This marks the 17th consecutive years that the quality distributors continues to support the efforts of the Guam Corps. They have since donated over 500 grand worth of food included in the donation, 10,000 pounds of rice, 4,800 cans of two of luncheon meat, turkeys and other food items. Sports is next. Keep it here. Join the thousands who switched to GTA's handset payment option. Now I can get the freshest new phone at any time. My payments are based on my finances. No more contracts for me. It's time to get the phone I want when I want it. With HBO, I get to choose. <laughs> Call or visit GTA today to learn more about HBO, the most customizable phone plan on island, only at GTA. How easy is it to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app? Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all-new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at. Just present the app to any authorized representative to earn your points. Now that was easy. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. <laughs> wow! Woo! Wait, what? Everyone's excited about the Chevy vehicles at the Chevy Black Friday sales event. I could get used to this. Wow. And you will be too when you get 0% financing on our award-winning Chevy cars, trucks, and SUVs. How is that even possible? <laughs> Now get 0% financing for 72 months on popular 2018 and 2019 Chevy models. Or make no monthly payments until next year. The Black Friday sales event ends soon. Call, click, or visit AK Chevrolet for a test drive today. Where can you find a burger inspired by flavors from near and far that mixes the smoky with the sass of the south? Combines the sweetness of summer with the tang of the country. For savory, sizzling, unexpected flavors. Well, you can find it at McDonald's. The new Bacon Smokehouse Burger. It's the newest flavor of the signature crafted recipes by McDonald's. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We start the show off tonight with news on our men's national basketball team as head coach E.J. Calvo held a press conference today to talk about the team's upcoming trip. Check it out. Our men's national basketball team leaves Ireland Saturday to Thailand to compete for a chance to move on in the FIBA Asia Cup. The event is a qualifier for the 2021 Eastern Region Group. Guam is drawn to Group B with Thailand, Singapore, and Fiji. Our goals are to win games because uh, if we don't finish in the top four, it kind of sets us back where we have to climb the ladder once again through the Pacific Games and earn a right to get back to this uh, higher stage of basketball. So uh, we're going one game at a time. Uh, we have to get the W in day one, day two, day three, and, and, and just get a rhythm going, and that's our main goal is to win. I played against a lot of these guys in the other, you know, the other countries. So I don't think we'll have, you know, a problem if we all play the right way, come together as a team. Uh, I think we fare very well. I think I'll try to be as aggressive as I was in college. Um, I just like I said, I'll just give my best. I'll leave it all on the court. Double I, double AG boys high school soccer. The JFK Islanders improved to 7-0 and on the season after picking up the 4-1 win at home against the St. John's Knights. Knights player Adam Cruz scored in the 12th minute of play to put the visiting squad up. JFK's Eddie Cho tied the game in the 24th minute after getting the shot to go past St. John's keeper. Taylor Bonner closed out the game for the Islanders in the second half, netting a hat trick to seal the win. JFK will next face the Ukudu Bulldogs next Tuesday, November 27th at JFK. The inaugural Gatorade G-Run is this Saturday at the Fest Pack Huts in Aganya. Showtime is at 5 in the morning with go time is scheduled for 6. You can register at Shell Foodies, Hornet Sports, Goody Sporting Goods. Advanced registration is $10 or $15 on race day. Prizes to the first 1,000 finishers. Gatorade G-Run t-shirts to the first 400 finishers. 
Gatorade silicone watches for the next 600 finishers. Over 40 raffles will be given away after the race. There will be three hydration stations lined up throughout the course. Funds raised will go towards the Pepsi Green Project. Don't forget this Friday on the stations of KUAM, NFL on CBS, KUAM TV 11, 3.30 in the morning. The Bears at the Lions, then at 11.15 in the morning on KUAM TV 8, NFL on NBC. Sunday Night Football, it's going to be the Falcons at the Saints. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. saves money on Black Friday. But at Cars Plus and Mighty, you can save all month long during our Black Friday sales event. Right now, save up to $10,500 on a new Ram 1500 or save up to six grand on a new Chrysler 300. How about a new Chrysler Pacifica? Save up to $4,000. Buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card where you'll get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Get great deals all month during Cars Plus Black Friday sales event. Cars Plus, driven by you. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. When you purchase a vehicle from our dealerships, we give back to the American Cancer Society and Guam Cancer Care. With your help, together, we've raised over $400,000, giving local cancer patients a gift of more anniversaries, more birthdays, more years, more days.